Okay, welcome to part five of the Alice uh, Shark Fish Game Tutorials, the final part. In this uh, tutorial, what we'll be talking about is how to create the lose condition. In other words, how to create timers. Um, how to work with camera controls and maybe give the user the option to switch between multiple cameras. How to keep the fish from escaping. This game, uh, there's nothing so far in the code that prevents the fish from randomly swimming away uh, somewhere else. So we have to take a look at that. And finally, we'll take a look at sound effects and how to spruce the game up a little bit. Okay, but let's start with the timer. Uh, there's two ways to do the timer, an easy way and a hard way. You're going to get more out of doing it the hard way, but I'm going to show you the easy way in case you're pressed for time and you just want to make sure there's some kind of timer in your game. Again, the core concept to any game and the, the higher marks you're going to get, if you have the conditions that somebody can win, and, and somebody can lose your game, then you're going to get a much higher mark than if you don't. We talked last uh, tutorial about how to make the variables and how to set it so somebody can win your game, and now we need some condition to make them lose the game. So if we go to initialize event listeners, here's again the easy way of doing the timer. Uh, it has its downfalls, and I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so let's say we add a scene activation time listener, and we just do a time listener of let's say 60 seconds to win the game okay so let's say all this is doing is it's keeping track of time it's going to count down from 60 and after 60 seconds elapse or passes it's going to do whatever's in this block so we could make the shark say you lose time's up and that again is the super super easy way of doing a timer uh, the downfall to doing this is you can't really um, okay, let's explain it this way. Let's say that you catch the three fish in 55 seconds, and your game's programmed to say you win. Oh, that's great, right? You win the game. Yay! But five seconds later, this isn't going to know whether or not you've won. And all of a sudden, the shark's going to say you lose, uh, which isn't the case. So, in other words, there's no way to actually cancel and cancel the win effect or cancel the timer let's say um, after you end up winning this game so that's a problem and the reason why there's no way to cancel that or to let the co computer know hey stop the timer somebody's already won is because you can't assign variables in here uh, you can see it gives this nasty kind of message here canceling uh, i wish you could use variables and in initialize event listeners but as far as i can tell you can't okay so let's get in then to how you could do a timer a little bit more sophisticated. And again, my first methods where you can work with variables, you might have guessed that we're going to need another type of variable. So let's go ahead and make a variable right now. And we're going to call it timer. Uh, timer is going to be a whole number. And it's going to be set to zero. The initializer is zero. That's its value at the very start of the game. Now the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need another loop, and as long as it's somewhere in this do together loop, we're going to be fine. So we'll do a while true is true, which again is always the case. We want the timer to count uh, up to 60 seconds. And basically what we want to do is we want to change the value of the timer. So we're going to assign the timer which is currently, um, let's just make this timer, um, which is currently set to zero when you first run the game. We're going to add some math to this, and we're going to make it timer plus one. So basically what this is doing is it's always doing this loop. It's counting up to 60, and it is taking the timer, which has the value of zero, and making it zero plus one. Okay, so timer now becomes 1. We go back through the loop. It does this 59 more times. Timer, which is currently 1, is equal to 1 plus 1, which is 2. Go back through 58 more times, and so on, until the timer gets to 60 seconds. Uh, there's one problem with the logic behind this. Even though we might think count up to 60 means count up to 60 seconds, it's actually not... It doesn't know that it's seconds, so it's counting up to 60 kind of relatively quickly. So we need to make sure that it's actually taking a second. So we're going to go to this, this delay, 
and we're going to delay by a second um, each time it goes through this counter so that it really is only going up by one every second. Okay, so you might remember that last time we uh, created a win condition, and now our game is a little bit more complex, so we have a way to lose, and we only want the user to win this game if they've caught all three fish and if they've done it in less than 60 seconds. So we're going to create one more loop that's going to check for both of those conditions. So while true is true, if, uh, let's just set that to true for now, and we're going to change this now. So if win is true, so in other words, if they've caught the three clownfish, um, and, okay, so both win is true, and let's just set another true for now. But in this one, what we're going to replace this with is we're going to check to see if timer is less than 60. So we want a whole number comparison instead of that true. And we want to know if something is less than, uh, let's just put in, we want to know if timer is less than the custom whole number of 60. Okay, so now let's take a look at what this is checking. This is always checking to see if both win is true and timer is less than 60. If the user catches all three fish in less than 60 seconds, then what do we want to have happen? Okay, now an easy way and a more difficult way, a fancier way to show that somebody's won. The easy way again would be to just go to the shark and would be to get the shark to say, uh, you win or whatever you wanted to say. Uh, and then I'll show you a slightly more advanced way in a second where you can work with billboards to do it. So keep in mind here, if I throw in a, this shark uh, says you lose, what's gonna happen here is it should say that you lose right away because this is gonna be, this condition here uh, is not gonna be true. And so it's automatically gonna say you lose because the timer will be less than 60 at the start. So it'll automatically go down to this line. So you might need like an if condition here as well. Um, set it to true for now. If, and then change this to a whole number. And this time use greater than. If timer is greater than 60. So we know that much time has passed. Then you could have the shark say you lose. So the only other thing we might want to adjust here is the duration of how long they say this for. Just so, because it's going to keep going through this and it's going to keep saying it over and over. So let's just set them both to 10 seconds. Now we can actually test to see if this is working. So um, up in my camera code, I did a move and orient to the shark behind. That was a camera that I put directly behind the shark. And I set the vehicle to the shark. And if we run the game, again, this is with the fish directly in front of the shark. So it's fairly easy to win this game. He's got one. He's got two, he's got three, and you win. Uh, let's test the lose condition. I don't want to wait 60 seconds or waste 60 seconds of the tutorial here. So let's just say that if it's less than three seconds, or if the timer is greater than three seconds, to say you lose. So running the game again. And there it is, three seconds later. So I know this is working. I'll put this back to 60. And we can move on from the timer. If you've got that far, you have a working game. You're going to get a really good mark uh, because you have the win condition and a lose condition. Talking a little bit about cameras here, you can see there's two main camera controls that I use. I use move and orient to good vantage point of whatever it is. So if you choose the clownfish, it's gonna show you the clownfish from kind of a third person over top point of view. And the other thing that I do is I create custom camera markers, as you guys know how to do, and I say move and orient to those camera markers. Now one of the things that you could do to enhance your game if you want to, is go to initialize event listeners and do a basic key press listener here. So if I said add um, keyboard key press listener you could say something fancy like let's say I wanted the user to be able to switch between first person first shark point of view and third person point of view I could say if 
Um, let's see. If get event key is, and let's say I did the digit one, okay, then the camera, this camera, I could say move and orient to uh, the shark itself. And what's interesting too is some of these have really interesting commands, like you could do the mouth of the shark. And that would really give you the point of view from within inside the, the mouth itself. And the user's probably only going to see the fish when he opens his mouth because the camera is literally put uh, inside the shark's mouth. And that should only happen if I press the first digit on the keyboard. So if I run that, I'll let it go for a couple seconds. I'll press one on the keyboard, and you're seeing actually inside the mouth, I believe, right now which will randomly open and close at different points. Uh, not the most useful camera at the moment, but you can make it so that the mouth opens a lot more frequently, and that way uh, that might be a useful camera. But even if you don't choose the mouth, if you choose something else on the shark, that might work well too. Uh, and let's say if else if the user presses, uh, let's say the, the number three for third person point of view, then maybe you just give them move and orient to a good vantage point of the shark. And that way they can switch back and forth between multiple camera angles. The program's always listening for that. So that's a little bit about camera angles. They are frustrating to work with in this program, uh, just getting the exact right angle that you want, but you're going to have to play around with that. Okay, the next topic, uh, one of our last topics, is how to keep the fish from escaping. Right now, there's nothing that prevents the fish from just swimming off on their own. Uh, so let's go with a position orientation listener. And let's do a proximity exit listener between customer A, customer A. And let's do, we'll choose 10 for now. Okay. So what this is doing is it's allowing me to pick a fish like the clownfish. And maybe I want to keep him close to the cave. Maybe the cave is where this all is going to center around. So let's go down to this cave. Now what's actually happening here is the program's listening for the clownfish getting further than 10 from the cave, whatever that is, 10 meters, 10 feet, who knows. Uh, but you can play around with the number there. So what is it going to do if the clownfish gets that far from the cave? Well, you could go to the clownfish right here. You go to the procedures and you could say move towards the cave by let's say two. Okay, so if the clownfish tries to escape, if he gets too far from the cave, he's going to be pulled back just like that. So that's pretty easy. You'd have to do one of these for each of your fish so that they can't swim away. Uh, the final thing I'll talk about is sound effects and how to enhance your game that way. Now, because the cameras are difficult to work with, uh, the user is likely to get to a situation where they don't see the fish. Maybe the fish are above them or below them, and uh, we want to give them some kind of hint that they might be close. So let's do another listener, another proximity listener. We're going to do, instead of an exit like we did with the fish getting too far away, we're going to do an enter listener. And we're going to do customer raise again. And we're going to make it fairly close, like two meters. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, if the shark gets close to the clownfish or the blue tang or the carp. So here you see the first array, if the shark comes within two of any of these three things, what are we going to do? Uh, now we can get into the sounds. So play audio. And we might actually want this coming from the, the shark instead. OK. So play audio. Now you can download, you can see I downloaded a JAWS sound effect. Um, you can certainly do that. You want to find an MP3. So you'll have to search around the internet if you want to find that. Or even if you go into import audio, 
Uh, I believe there's some pretty good shark sound effects. If we go into sound effects here, and if we go into water, I believe, you can see that there's some water effects here, but I believe there's exact shark ones to eye here there. So in the shark, you can see shark feeding frenzy, for example. We could put that in. That could be the sound that happens. Uh, again, the sound's going to play whenever the shark gets within two of any of these fish. Okay, so now we have a, a pretty complex game going on that has sound effects, that has different camera angles, that has variables. Uh, the last thing I'm going to end off with is just how to do a fancier win or lose condition. We talked about having the shark just say, uh, you win or you lose down here. I just wanted to show you billboards really quickly because I think this might help you with your custom game too. If you go into the scene setup, you're going to see something, if we go under shapes and text, called the new billboard. So if I pull the billboard out and I call this win uh, billboard and I say OK. And I go into that, you want to right click on it. And it's taken a while, procedures. And you can set the paint of this to import image. Now, why would I do that? Well, let's say that I downloaded from Google Images a sign that said you win, like a fancy sign. That would put that image over top of the billboard. So this billboard here, instead of being this blank color, would become that graphic of you win. Now what I could do is I could put a camera marker, so I'd probably navigate around here, get really zoomed into it, and once I have that perfectly on my screen, I would make a new camera mar marker. I would call it, let's say, win cam. And then when I go back to my code, I might actually even, at the start, set the billboard's opacity to zero. So that if you happen to swim by this billboard when you haven't won, you're not even going to notice it. And then if I set that to zero, the opacity, and I went back here, instead of just saying you win, you could go to this camera. You could say move and orient to good vantage point of, or even move and orient to. Choose that win camera change the opacity of the wind camera to one at that moment or the billboard sorry change it to one at that moment and then you have a fancier condition of saying you win a little bit more exciting you could see you could do the exact same thing for the you lose these are just things to enhance your mark if you want an extra challenge and you still have time but i will accept these basic win lose conditions as well so congratulations if you got this far sorry for the lengthy tutorial but again, I think uh, this is going to help you a lot with your own custom game as well. And I'm excited to see those. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.